Well, I can tell you one person who doesn't believe in polls, and that's Hillary Clinton. <laughs> she was 21 points ahead of Bernie in Michigan <laughs> and lost, um, <laughs> according to the real clear politics average. So <laughs> uh, the moral high ground is a shaky place to be in the Senate when it comes to judges. <laughs> so I won't go there. <laughs> Uh, I will say, if you live long enough, is is fascinating. A long life allows you to be lectured to regarding fairness about judges from people who I think have been exceedingly unfair. And I like you all very much, and I want to work with you where I can. But the Senate's evolving in a very bad way. Uh, we don't need to go back to the Civil War to find out where we're headed. Uh, we're headed to changing the rules probably in a permanent fashion. Um, when President Bush's nominees were filibustered in mass, there was a temptation on our side to do the nuclear option. I was one of the gang of 14 that said, let's not go down that road, seven de Democrats, seven Republicans. Only three of us are left, and we found a way to confirm most of President Bush's nominations. He lost a handful. I got that crap beat out of me at home. And when I told people, I just thought that consequences come with elections and you know this is we don't want to change the 60 vote rule because you may need it one day yourself nobody wanted to hear that until we lost <laughs> and the very same people are beating that crap out of me now <laughs> because uh, I would sometimes work with the other side so I know what I'm getting uh, here's what's going to happen in the unlikely event we lose the White House which I know is hard to believe given the dynamic of the Republican Party now but just in case we lose, and I know that seems almost impossible to imagine, uh, Hillary Clinton's going to be president, unless Bernie keeps doing well and something helps, happens I don't know about. Let's just assume for a moment she is president. I'm telling everybody on my side, she's going to pick somebody probably more liberal than President Obama's going to send over in a few days. And I'm going to vote for that person. I think they're qualified. I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan not because I would have picked them, but because I thought the President of the United States deserves the right to pick judges of their philosophy, and that goes with winning uh, the White House. Why do I feel comfortable doing this? The history of the Senate is pretty clear here. The current Vice President in 1992 argued for what we're doing. The sitting President of the United States filibustered two Republican Supreme Court justices, so when he called me, I said, is this the same guy that filibustered Alito and Roberts? So you're asking me to do something you couldn't do yourself, which is, in your view, be fair. I never thought you were fair to, to our judges, but it's not about me paying you back. It's trying to have some process I think will stand the test of time. This will stand the test of the time. This is the last year uh, of a lame duck president, and if Ted Cruz or Donald Trump get to be president, they've all asked us not to confirm or take up a selection by President uh, Obama. So if a vacancy occurs in their last year of their first term, guess what? You will use their words against them. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination, and you could use my words against me, and you'd be absolutely right. We're setting a precedent here today, Republicans are, that in the last year, at least of a lame duck eight-year term, I would say it's going to be a four-year term, that you're not going to fill a vacancy of the Supreme Court based on what we're doing here today. That's going to be the new rule. When y'all change the rules about appellate judges and district court judges to get your way, I thought it was a really abuse of power. And what you have done here is you've made the caucuses, the Republican and Democratic caucuses, are now not going to have to reach across the aisle when it comes to appellate judges and district court judges to get input from us or we get input from you. So what does that mean? That we're going to pick the most hard-ass people we can find and dare somebody in the conference to vote against that person. You're going to have the most liberal members of your caucus <clears throat> pushing you to pick the most liberal judges because you don't need to have to reach across the aisle to get any of our input. And we'll do the same. So over time, the judiciary is going to be more ideologically driven because the process in the Senate now does not require you to get outside your own party. 
So I'll be fighting talk radio when somebody on my side puts up a nut job, and they will. And I'll fight if I think they're truly a nut job. That's going to happen on your side, too. So this is where we find ourselves. I'm saddened by the fact that the Senate has gone down the road we've gone. I'm very much supportive of what you're doing, Mr. Chairman. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. But I just want the members on this side to know if we lose this election, my view of what the president to come will be able to do is the same. If it is Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders and they send over a qualified nominee, I am going to vote for them in this committee and on the floor because I think that's what the Constitution envisioned by advising consent. There is no roadmap in the Constitution of what to do, when to do it. The Senate has always done what it thought was best at the time it was in. Well, at the time we're in, what's best seems to be to play politics with judges pretty much on both sides. But y'all started a new game when you changed the rules. There'll come a day when you have a Republican or Democratic president with a Republican Democratic uh, Senate, and they're going to change the rules for the Supreme Court. They're going to get frustrated. So it's just a matter of time before the Senate becomes the House when it comes to judges, and I really hate that. Before